So, father and son, you guys have been playing music a long time. You've been playing, obviously, here um, in Nashville since the early, early 80s, mid-80s, yes. something like that. Yep. How did you guys wind up? How did we meet? No, no. <laughs> I, now, how did you guys wind up? You know, playing on certain projects together, some of the big stuff. I mean, yeah. that's pretty. That's pretty incredible. Father yeah. and son playing on. You know, some. It is incredible, and it's it's assuring for me that it's like, okay, I'm still relevant, and for him, it's like, okay, I'm good enough to get on this stuff, and now he's surpassed just being good enough. You know. Wow. Yeah. He's he's won awards that I've been trying to go get. You know, for a while. <laughs> And he went ahead and did it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. It's fine. Do, do, do you guys, um, you know, in, in terms of just collaborating on music, do you do that at all? I mean, obviously you're a drummer, you're a guitar player. Do you collaborate on songs at all or not really? We have, yeah. but, but most of the time when we're together, it's on a session, you know, uh, and we're collaborating then, you we know. We can collaborate on lunch. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can yeah. figure that out together. But no, we've done stuff like I, I was digging through an old hard drive the other day and found songs that he and I wrote with Kelly Clarkson together, mm -hmm. which that was a really cool thing for me to listen to and know that it was just me and him and her, yeah. father, son, and, you know, one of my idols. And the holy heck. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So when people talk about, you know, A-listers, A-list musicians here in Nashville, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who are going to be watching this who would like to go. You know, how do I become that? It, you, you, you don't just do it. Do you fall into it, or do you have to kind of carve your own You'd path? have to ask the A-listers, but the C-listers <laughs> will tell you that... Uh, that Better than a B-list or a blister. <laughs> yeah. If you just pay enough money to the right people, you can usually get in where you need to get in. <laughs> you, you know what? You, ha you have to be just... You have to have big ears. In other words, you have to really want to listen and hear the song for what's going on. Uh, you also have to be super proficient at your instrument for several different styles. Used to, you could have like one little thing that you did and you could get hired for that. Now you have to be pretty well versed in a lot of different things. And then just be fun to be with, you know, for a day because it makes the creativity flow a lot easier if it, everyone's having a good time. Miles, do you have a favorite genre? Uh, I, I shouldn't say it. Be truthful. <laughs> I, I'm a bit of a metalhead. Um, I, I know nothing about country music, despite it being my profession, day in and day out. Yeah. Uh, he I plays listen, one on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I listen to a lot of metal. It's funny, when I actually won an award for being a country drummer, he texted me and said, hey, you're a country drummer now. <laughs> uh, okay. That is unusual, though. It, it is unusual. It is. Unusual. It yeah. is. yeah. So, so the, the most fun part about what you do, either one of you can take this, and then the least fun thing that you guys have to do, musically related. Uh, the well, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I feel, uh, I make this analogy sometimes, it's probably a bad analogy. It's like, I guess if they're like a firefighter and his son, if they got to fought fires together, but we don't do anything near that heroic. You know, we save songs, maybe, <laughs> but not lives. But it's just so much fun to get in and you know, we can kind of read each other's minds. And then a big, big thrill for me is seeing how he reacts hearing a song for the first time in the studio. Because he's hearing things that I miss. He's hearing vocal phrasing and stuff, and I'm just trying to figure out, all right, what am I going to play on this? And he's listening to, the, you know, what, what the singer's doing. Uh, and it's, it's really great to see that part of it. But that works both ways. I mean, uh, Whereas I'm focusing on stuff that's probably more pertinent to my chair, I I'm waiting to hear what he does because it opens up parts of my ears that I wasn't using for certain parts of the song. Um, so there's always, you know, when you say, do you guys collaborate often on songs, I think a lot of times we think about that in terms of actually writing music together. But it really is, there is a lot of collaboration that happens between not just he and I, but all of us guys in a room together when we kind of have a plan set in place and when we start playing and if we listen to what everyone else is doing we're going oh that's a direction that i didn't think of or oh that's a interesting part for that section of the song that i would have never even noticed so there is a lot of collaboration that goes on it's just typically kind of happens without speaking and that's the strength of nashville a lot of times in other cities they'll overdub one person at a time but we get in here and it's historically accurate to get a bunch of people in the room together and work it out. It's like a brain trust at that point, you know, and somebody will do one thing like he just said and it sends us off and down a different direction, you know. 
What's the thing about your profession that you you don't like so much, or is hard, or difficult, or depressing? Well, for me, I, I can answer for that because I've been doing this for almost 40 years, is uh, the, the way the music scene is now, everything is more singles driven, where you're getting a song that's going to make it on the radio, because that's where it still traditionally pays. Uh, so I miss the album cut. I miss the album cut writer. It's a deeper cut. It, it's, it's a song on the record that maybe you don't hear on the radio, but it made you buy that entire album back in the day. And it, it, you still remember it more than the radio single. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's great to get a single, and some of it's just selling soap, you know, or love jingles, or whatever you want to call it. But I miss the album cut writer. That's my biggie. Miles, what about you? I, I mean, I, I would echo that same sentiment in terms of, you know, it, the more information I have about a project, the more there is for me to work with. And so, when you're just cutting a song and you don't know where it sits in the context of an artist's career or an album or what song is coming before it or after it, you know, there, there was a, a point in time, and it still happens, it's just not as often, where you, you work on a record and somebody says, hey, this is the last track. So we know that we have the freedom to, to go long or it can be a little more epic or whatever the case may be. I, I do miss having, uh, and I'm, I'm sure there's other things that I think suck about <laughs> our job, but just, you know, expounding on that, I, I, I miss making an album. Mm -hmm. and, and we still do that, but it is a lot of times often a more of a collection of singles than it is something that you truly want to sit and listen to front to back. And just as, a, as an artist, so to speak, as much as we can call ourselves artists, <laughs> um, it, it is really nice to kind of have a larger canvas from which to craft from, to, to know sort of the beginning and the end and how it all flows. I miss that. But yeah. other than that, it's still pretty still sweet. fun. Yeah. You get to play your instrument, you know. Yeah. Even if it's singles and bad singles, it's still fun. How neat is it to be able to, you know, to share with your friends or people, strangers maybe, you know, what you do and say, hey, both my son and I are in this kind of together. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. It is, it, it, it is, it, but it's kind of hard to put into words too. I don't know how to fully put across, you know, how much fun it is, you know, to be able to do that, to, to come and it's like, are you going to be in the 2 p.m. too? Great, I'm going to, you know, see, do you want to grab lunch before? You know, it's, it's really awesome. Yeah. And it's, and yeah, that's the thing is, is with, with people that are sort of outside the industry, it is, but for people inside the industry, they know how much fun it is for us because they understand, like, they can sort of imagine like, oh, what if my kid or my dad was with me in this situation and we got along almost as well as we do. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, for the people in the industry, they get it and they're like, oh, yeah, you guys are really incredibly lucky because there's not yeah. a lot of, I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely, we have some father-son duos that yeah. we get to work with from time to time too, but there's... There's not a lot. Not a lot, yeah. What about outside of, of the studio, outside of stage work, outside of playing on the road? Do you guys do stuff together? I don't and even so, have what phone number now. I, I, did you uh, get a new phone? Uh, <laughs> 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 we, we've, we've seen each other yeah. before. Yeah. We, we, we talk a bunch, text a bunch. Find something funny on the internet, swap it out a bunch. Yeah, we, 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 it's a good hang. Man, yeah. that's cool stuff. It is. So, <clears throat> today, um, what are we going to be, be seeing in the studio? What are you guys going to be doing? We're going to, uh, you know, I was talking to Miles about this, and he said, Let, you know, what do, what do we want to play? What do we want to noodle around on? He said, let's just do something that's part of the problem. It's like what our, our normal everyday thing is when we come into music row, row and, uh, you know, put a track together. So we'll just kind of run through the motions on that. They call that a day in the life. A day in the life. Yes. We're gonna, a we're slice gonna of a day life. In the life. Uh, yeah. Day in the life. Yes, yeah. indeed. So before we, we wrap this interview part, the formal interview part up, um, can you both just, even if you, you're trading back and forth between each other, you just give us sort of a, a, a thumbnail sketch of some of the artists that people watching this would recognize names. Go ahead. Artists say. Uh, well, you, you said Kelly Clarkson. I'm just saying. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, he and I both played on, on a, a, a pop. Was it a dance hit? Yeah, a dance number one hit. Mm -hmm. uh, catch, 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 catch my breath. 
We did play on that. Oh, that was great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, she did it better. Uh, uh, Lee Bryce. Yeah, so my first two number ones that I played on actually were he and I together. <laughs> which was kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Now we just have to get that metal cut, you know, that number one metal cut. Yeah, I don't think wow. that's happening anytime okay. soon. Um, uh, I've played on the last couple of Chris Young records, yeah. um, John Party. I played on a Reba McIntyre record yeah. recently. Some Rascal Flats. Yeah. Um, uh, Trace Adkins. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jake Owen. Stuff. And you've toured with. Uh, started. Uh, what brought me to town was Amy Grant. Uh, uh, the next tour I was on was Reba McIntyre, and then Faith Hill, and then Tim McGraw, and I did a Vince Gill Christmas tour, which was which was a lot of fun until he said, "Take it, Jerry," and she's like, "No, Fernandy, 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 free." <laughs> but that's my road. Yeah, that's that's some of the road work yeah. stuff. Yeah. Do you guys both prefer studio work? to touring or not really? I mean, I, I'm speaking for myself on this. I absolutely love touring. Um, it's just for where I'm at in life at the moment, I've got a 13 year old and a 12 year old. It just makes more sense for me to be home. Um, and, and just from an economic standpoint, being beholden to one person for a paycheck isn't my favorite at the moment. Uh, but I miss it, I do. I haven't really gotten to tour in years and I wish I could. It just I can't. Yeah, he toured with Kelly Clarkson for four years and did a couple of Paramore tours, which was a, it's, you know, it was a fun rock thing for him. It was awesome. Yeah. I had a blast. It was yeah. some of the most fun I've ever had, but. You had a pretty scary accident. I screwed up once. <laughs> what, what happened? I wrecked a golf cart. And that's common in the rock circles. <laughs> but what ensued was not common. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I broke a bunch of stuff in my face and had some burns and um, there was there was some moments where doctors were saying, hey, we don't know if you're going to be able to use your hand. And I was like, I need it. <laughs> this one I need. I need it to work. So if you could do whatever you need to do to make sure that it works, that would be great. Jerry, were you worried? Uh, yeah. Oh, the pictures? Oh, they were, it, it looked like morgue photos. It was awful. It was awful. Yeah. It was pretty bad. It was bad. It was way bad. Yeah. But all that's behind you guys now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wow. All healed. I'm not much more handsome, but nor is he, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess it all works out. Yeah. You guys are great, man. Yeah, let's, let's wrap this up. All right. <laughs>